I mean, I, I love the enthusiasm uh, that Kevin has. And, I, you know, and I do share sort of there's a part of me that shares um, the view that there's more to education and the value of education than than simply getting someone to a job. But I'm afraid I'm, I'm, I'm with Michelle on the OK, but if taxpayers are to a very large sum subsidising this. Um, and actually what we really know is that a lot of the courses that this, the regular wants to, regulator wants to target are actually pretty rubbish yeah. courses that, that individuals and taxpayers are spending a small fortune on, you know, keeping going. Uh, universities are making money from having. Then... No, I don't think that's a good thing. And I think we should be tightening that. And, and, and you know, Kevin, you said, it, uh, you said a, a great phrase, but in a negative, whereas I would pick that up and say that's what universities should be, which is an engine for social mobility. And you know who a vast proportion of the students doing these um, not very helpful and expensive courses are? They're from disadvantaged backgrounds, you know. And so we've got essentially if you want to use that terrible phrase, underprivileged, disadvantaged, whatever you want to call this group of, of young people, being told, as Michelle, you alluded to in the intro, you've got to go to university because if you don't go to university, you're somehow a failure, which is obviously a ridiculous position that we find ourselves in. So they're going, oh, gosh, I've got to go to university. They end up at these rubbish courses and they come out not with additional skills, you know, a kind of a degree that's going to open doors to great jobs. They're coming out with debt, they come out with debt and basically nothing to show for three years of going through a university that hasn't really offered them yeah. anything. So I'm all for yeah. cracking down on this. You know, this. It's, it's, this is an interesting discussion. I can remember in years gone by sitting in parents' evenings before COVID when you actually spoke to a human mm. being. Then with the days. Rather yeah. than via a video or whatever. And often, I have to be honest, I can remember quite a few Nigerian women and Ghanaian women, uh, certain African parents, and they would always be talking about university options and we're going to go, my son's going to go and do some computer programming or he's going to do finance, he's going to do this and that. And I'd be making the point that your, your son or your daughter is a brilliant historian or a brilliant sociologist even, which I taught. And they go, no, 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 no. And I totally understand why their parents wanted to get that kid in a conveyor belt towards a university degree, whatever, where they're going to come out the other side, make a lot of money and improve their lives. But I, I want to argue this, and I really passionately believe this, I actually think that, that that's cheating on a lot of those kids and sells them short. And my argument is, I want that kid to go to the best university, the Russell Groups, the Oxbridges and everywhere else. I want them, if they want to do the history or the classics or literature, to be able to study and learn the best that's been thought and said. Because you probably know this, Charlotte, from your think tank. I bet you do. You probably know that when people have that well-rounded education, that culturally literate education, when they come out the other side, they're often the very people that the City of London and the banks and everybody else wants to employ. Oh, I couldn't and agree so, more. And so yeah. my point is that you know, a byproduct of a good education is that actually often a good job will follow. And, and the problem that we also have in this discussion, tell me off if I'm convoluting the discussion too much, is that we somehow think that educating the kids in a certain way in the university is going to solve the problems of the economy further down the line. My point is that's completely looking at it cart before a horse. But the, the, pro the problem, I think, Kevin, is that you're absolutely right. Look, you know, hands up, I'll make a confession here. I did history at university. Uh, so I didn't do a kind of, you know, a sort of particularly you know, skill-focused, profession-focused degree. I did history and, you know, I'm delighted with what I do now and that's great. Um, but you know what? The going and doing something like history or classics or English lit or whatever it might be, art history, whatever it is, right? Going and doing that at Russell Group University or Oxbridge is going to open doors. That is not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is going and doing like, excuse my French, but crappy degrees yeah. in universities that aren't going to be recognised, where those kids have been pushed to go to university... Oh, Charlotte, we agree. ...and actually you're not getting anything from the end of it. Yeah, so what I'm saying is you, you don't sort of judge those and say you should do this. Just scrap them. If they're crappy, if they're crappy degrees, 100,000%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 